Let's say there's a lake with a nice swimming area, lots of grass for picnicking and relaxing, forests with a trail to explore, rocks for jumping, and it's free. In theory, you're willing to pay for the area and experience, just as you would for an amusement park or some other recreational activity. But if the lake is free, then how do land planners really know how much they should be spending protecting and maintaining the area? While nature doesn't charge you for a beach the same way you're charged for an amusement park, there are some indirect costs involved in these things. You have to spend money getting there, bus fare, fuel, car upkeep, and you'll have an opportunity cost on your time. These are the economic costs of travel. So if people treat travel costs the same way they would treat a ticket price, then we know they feel they're getting at least that much value from the experience. Those who have to pay the higher costs, people who live far away, will probably go less often than the people who live closer, for whom it's cheaper to get to. Then we can do something like we did in a previous video, where we took the price and consumer data from past years and use regression analysis to build an equation from that. We do the same thing here, but using travel costs instead of the cost of the product or service. Something we need to think about though, let's say this is their travel costs, and that's what we're going to assume is the benefit they're receiving from the area. But some people might enjoy the trip. It's not just a cost to them. And otherwise people may be doing other things, and this is just one stop on the trip. Like a weekend grocery trip that is always accompanied by a visit to the lake or something. Okay, these travel costs they're trading may be being traded for more than just just the recreational spot. They may be split among the enjoyment of driving or other activities, which will model our analysis. It depends a bit on the specific kind of analysis we're doing, but the general information that we want from people is how far they travel, how many people are traveling together, and how they travel, so we can know their travel costs per person. We want to know how often they go. We want to know if they're doing anything else on the trip, their income or other demographics that affect demand. And otherwise we want to know how many people use the site each year and whether or not there are substitute sites in the area. If we can collect information for this stuff, we can use regression analysis to try to build the relationships between the stuff and the amount the area is used, or the demand. Then we can play with an entrance fee, tweak the costs people have to pay, and see if bringing in money that way can be efficient. Or if we also gather information on what people do at the location, see what proportion of people are coming for swimming or hiking, then we can predict how the value of the location will change with the potential environmental damage, or see if it's worthwhile to invest in improvements. Some researchers looked at the value of recreational fishing of abalone along the coast of California. Conservation Strategy Fund research actually. To fish abalone, you have to be registered, and you're expected to keep records of where you catch the abalone. So they just drew from that to find the population of the fishermen, and where they go. Then they did a phone survey of a subset of the registered members, and used them as an estimate for the rest. There were about 50 diving spots, and they factored in the presence of public bathrooms, boat launch spots, algal bloom events, parking, and ease of access, so they could model these other factors that influence an angler's decision to dive there, find out what people like, and why they would travel farther to a different spot. To find the actual travel cost, we would find the distance they've traveled and then multiply it by the price of driving, which will depend on the price of fuel in that location. AAA has a tool that can make this really easy. Then calculate the opportunity cost of their time. There are different standard ways of doing this. In the abalone study, they took people's wages and divided it in half. If we don't have data on income, maybe we take the average wage of their zip code and divide that by half. In the United States, at least, they keep census data on people's wages. We could also use this to value some goods. You know, if people have to travel to gather water or other materials, there could be travel costs involved than those, but this method is mostly used for recreational values. In the next video, we're going to look at housing prices as a way to value ecosystem services.